Oh. Well, hey there, guys. I'm Axel the Beast, and this is the Curiosity Shop, the Zelda Dungeon.net video mailbag where I answer your Zelda questions. Uh, another Vendora's Mask one. Uh, until the end of Vendora's Mask month, that's, that'll probably be the case. Um, our first question comes from Ocarina, Ocarina of Wind Princess. What is your favorite form of Majora in, in the final boss battle? Majora's Mask, Incarnation, or Wrath? Well, I liked all the forms. Majora's was a, Majora was a great boss for me, but um, you know the mask form was great because it was like uh, you know it was how you imagine a mask would come to life and fight you, um, and you know incarnation was kind of like freaky and like whoa what the hell and it was turning into that and uh, Majora's Wrath was like Wah! just the the big final form for the final enemy the big adversary you had to face this demonic. Uh, warrior you had to face at the end. It was just a very cool form, it was a very lethal form, and I think it just really made everything come together for the final battle, for the climax of the game. But be sure to tell me what was your favorite form in the comments. Um, Michael Tognetti asks, Last mailbag you said that the Happy Mask Salesman could handle Majora's Mask, whereas the Skull Kid couldn't. So does that mean the Happy Mask Salesman is more powerful than the Majora's Mask? If that is the case, why? Well, actually, it's more like uh, th that's like some of the dialogue they use in the game. I believe the Happy Mask Salesman says he could handle it. What really happens is that Happy Mask Salesman isn't intending to put on Majora's Mask. I'm pretty sure he'd be overcome if he tried. Although Link might not because he was able to overcome the Fierce Deity Mask. The Happy Mask Salesman never put it on. I don't think he intended to. He just wanted to have the mask. Whereas um, the Skull Kid did put it on. And he might have actually been drawn to put it on by the mask. I'm not sure. I don't think so, but that's possible. And it was the fact that he put it on that meant he couldn't handle it. He didn't know what it was, and he came and he put it on anyway. He was kind of an idiot. Um, Matthew asks, In the last mailbag, you mentioned that some people think that the Dark Tribe are a different tribe as stated in other games, as it is Termina. Surely Majora's Mask could have been found in Hyrule, then stolen from the salesman as he crossed over from Hyrule to Termina. Therefore, the Dark Tribe would still be the same Dark Tribe as mentioned in other games. Well, the thing is, you're, you're right, it's possible. But the thing is, is that, and I have actually theorized the same, similar things, but the thing is, is that Stone Tower has so many uh, images of Majora in it that I'm, like, certain that it was intended to worship Majora, indicating Majora's origins are from Termina. Therefore, the mask is pretty much from Termina, at least as far as we've had confirmed. But, you know, it could go both ways. It's not definite enough, I guess, but that's still what the conclusion I've come to and what I believe. And I think the evidence really does point there most of all. Zelda is amazing asks, I was watching the Red Star Theory video your channel posted, and I was wondering if it really was them. Um, I'll link to this in the in the uh, description. But uh, this was a video that we posted. Uh, it was part of the Z Talk podcast in which random person discussed the Red Star, which is basically the star that appears in the sky and uh, only on the first night of the first day, and it disappears at the exact time that the aliens, they, attack Romani Ranch. Now, uh, you know, the thing is, is I think Random Person's theory there is really the only conclusion. It was they. It is the only thing that it could mean. It, they were coming to Termina, or that was they in the sky, and they attacked Termina, or Romani Ranch, and then it disappeared. That's the only conclusion one could come to. It's too much of a coincidence. I believe in coincidences, but not when they're that big. Um, Where Duck asks, why doesn't the Fierce Deities mask have an instrument, and what do you think it would be if it did have one? Well, you guys can give your own opinions in the comments if you want. Me personally, I don't think I think the reason it didn't have an instrument is purely because it wasn't one of the normal forms of the game. It was an extra at the end of the game as a reward for completing everything. Whereas the instruments are meant to help you get through the game; they're they're part of the progression of the game. Whereas the Fierce Deity mask was just an extra, mainly to defeat the final boss, but could also be brought back to the other bosses. Um, if he had an instrument, it would probably be something along the lines of either playing his sword, or just going, Aah! or something like that. I mean, that's the only thing that he would do that would fit him, because he's just the big, scary warrior who can defeat Majora, kind of. That's, that's his purpose. Uh, Kabumi asks, do you think Termina is a real place in the Zelda universe, or is it, or is it imaginary? I've always thought that it was a place created by Majora using the memories of Hyrule from Link's mind. What do you think? Well, you know, that's an interesting theory. I mean, there are other explanations to what Termina is. 
they're interesting for consideration for fun theorizing, but the thing is, is what Termina is has been confirmed in the manual of the game. It reads as something like, uh, This is a kind of parallel world that is similar yet different from the land of Hyrule, which was the setting for the Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time, which basically confirms it as an alternate dimension or an alternate version of the same world. Um, there's, uh, that's a confirmed fact. That's not a theory. I've said this before, but here's the direct quote. Um, so yeah. Uh, other theories are fun. They could work, but they're not really canon. Uh, the Angry Cuckoo asks, In the ending cutscene in Majora's Mask, there's a segment that shows the Zora Band playing with the guitarist, who supposedly died. Do you think my cow didn't actually die, or that it's Link wearing the Zora Mask? Well, actually, Link in Zora form, Zora Link, and my cow himself actually look slightly different, as do all the mask forms. Link takes on a slightly different Link-like appearance of the person he turns into. And actually, the graphics for both my cow and Zora Link are different, so if you look carefully, that's actually Zora Link in the bar in the background. So, uh, yes, it was Link playing in place of my cow, I guess. Maybe that's the last thing he did before he left so that they could have their game, their, they could play their performance. I don't know. It's weird. It might have just been symbolic or just to show the piece of Terminant. It might not have not actually meant that Link was there. I don't know. Um, Varley Raccoon asks, Where did the giants, the ones who try to stop the moon, go after they left the Skull Kid? And why did they leave him in the first place? Um, if you get the All Night Mask and then you talk to Andrew's grandmother in the Stockpot Inn, she actually will tell you all these stories about, uh, well, two stories about uh, the Carnival of Time and the Giants. The Giants were the protective gods of Termina and possibly its creators, so that's kind of inspecific of what they mean when they say they created the Four Worlds. Um, basically, the Giants were the protective gods and the Carnival of Time was kind of in honor of the Harvest and in honor of them a little bit. And um, they decided suddenly that they were going to stop protecting the, level, the people by um, well, they were going to protect them still, but from sleep. They were going to go, they each departed in 100 steps in every direction, each compass direction, and select. And this kind of formed the four regions, to what I understand. This de the point they departed from was the clock tower. And their, the Skull Kid was their friend before they decided to go sleep. When they went to sleep, he was upset. And he, start, he was angry, because he had been abandoned, or so he thought. And he went to terrorize the people, and they came back and said, uh, Stop it, or we're going to destroy you. And he was upset, and he went back to heaven. Maybe that's just language because it's an old story or something. But anyway, point is, that's when they left him. And they, they still considered him their friend. He just didn't understand why they left, probably because they're gods. Who understands what gods are trying to do? They just they do their thing, and there's some meaning behind it, but we're not meant to understand. Although this isn't like God up above. This is the, the four giant gods. But, you know, it's a similar principle. Um... Black Cat 23 asks, can you beat Majora's forms without using the Fierce Deity Mask? Yes. Actually, that's the first way I beat them. Um, the first form, Majora's Mask, you beat by like hitting it in the back with the arrow if you're lucky. And once it starts shooting lasers, you can actually reflect them b the lasers back with the mirror shield to stun them. With Majora's Incarnation, you really just have to catch him. It's a little tricky. And um, slash him with a sword. And with Majora's Wrath, you just have to find a way to slash him if you can get close while blocking with your shield, or shoot him with an arrow to stun him and then get a chance to slash him. That's how you can fight them without the Fierce Deity Mask. It's hard, but it is possible. With Fierce Deity Mask, it's almost childishly easy. Um, Tracy Rengel asks, We all know that the Skull Kid in Majora's Mask is the Skull Kid from Ocarina of Time that we sold the mask to. My question is, do you think, for any reason, that the Skull Kid and Twilight Princess could be the same Skull Kid from Majora's Mask and Ocarina of Time? I do think that is very possible. It's not definite, but there's a mysterious nature to the Skull Kid and Twilight Princess that I think strengthens that idea, and I think I've come to that conclusion. Um, it's not specifically stated, but yeah, I kind of agree with you there. Uh, there's not a lot of reason I can say to back it up. It's just that reason. He's mysterious, and it seems like there's more to him than they tell you about. And, uh, I don't know, the fact that he's trying to help you and he's mischievous, it just fits the same Skull Kid. I don't... That's one case where it could be the same character, I think. Jacob Welch asks, I've noticed that Majora's Mask is shaped like a heart. Do you think it was just intended for irony, or do you think it could mean something? 
Uh, it definitely means something. It means that um, I love Majora's Mask and that they they foresaw this and intended specifically as a reference to me loving the game. No, I'm just kidding. Um, the Majora's Mask I don't think has any reason for its shape. I believe they just picked it because that's the shape that worked with the design they were going with instead of an oval or a square or whatever. But um, I don't even think it was intended to be ironic. I don't think it means anything whatsoever. Andrew Van Dyke asks, what do you think is the worst part about Majora's Mask and how can it be improved? Well, I actually am kind of weird with Majora's Mask in that I consider it one of the few Zelda games that's really almost perfect. But I can think about it and say that probably in some ways there are parts that are too hard and frustrating and that they actually should have implemented a way to make it easier on people. It should have been more accessible to the casual gamer, but still the same way it was for the harder, more hardcore gamers if they chose to. I believe that there needs to be an option for both kinds of gamers, not just strictly for one or the other. With any game, really. And I also think that um, there were ways the dungeons were designed where they should have had a better way to move around the dungeon after you've completed puzzles, you didn't have to redo them, stuff like that. I also hate the bottom of the well. That's a really irritating part of the game, and they could have done that better. Um, late, last question. Lady Eros asks, What are your theories on the Children of the Moon? I've noticed that their hair is similar to the Happy Mask Salesman's, as well as the fact that they also ask Link if he will be a Mask Salesman too one day. What do you suppose their connection is to Happy Mask Salesman, if you think there's one at all? Um, I actually really just think the Kids on the Moon were supposed to be symbolic of the themes of the game, of friendship, the masks, of just, you know, the mysterious nature of the game, and everything that... I think they were a, they're like a composite of all of its themes, and I don't think, I think they're supposed to go along with the fact that the moon was sort of like a spirit world, and it just goes along with this kind of spiritual, weird nature of the game and part of the surreal stuff. I don't think it was uh, intended to be anything specific, but rather symbolic. I don't think they have a direct connection to the Having Mask Salesman, aside from coincidence. Um, I'm interested in hearing your guys' thoughts, though, because that's something a lot of people debate on, and it's an interesting point of discussion, so yeah. All right, that's it for this time, guys. Be sure to send more Majora's Mask questions to the email address in the description, and I'll see you guys later.